Hello Angels, my name is Rachel Slauson. I am a former Miss Utah USA, a current actress and model, and on this channel we discuss all things self-love. Okay, so we can't talk about self-love without talking about mental health. And right now, one of the biggest conversations happening in the media is Kanye West and Kim Kardashian and whatever's been going on with his mental health and their divorce. So now while I don't wanna make this entire video about Kim and Kanye for reasons you will soon see, I do wanna say that at least when public figures are so open about what they're going through, it opens up the door for a conversation. So what I want you to know is that if you don't really know me that well, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder a few years back. I've had multiple mental health challenges of my own. I have been hospitalized before, and I'm very open about all these things because I genuinely want to help anyone who's going through the same thing. You might not relate. You might not get what mental illness is at all. And if that's you, please stick around because I hope that through these conversations, you can learn a little bit and maybe help relate to that cousin or brother or sister who struggles with their mental health that you have not been able to connect with. So you may have noticed that Kanye West seems to be struggling with a very public mental health breakdown while publicly grieving the divorce of his family. Jamila Jamil took to Instagram to share a very important message on mental health, basically saying that, well, you can read for yourself, that if we're giving too much attention to this situation, we're essentially doing the exact same thing that we did to Britney Spears. As someone who personally struggles with bipolar disorder and has had a few mental health breakdowns in the course of my life, it's hard for me to disagree. But what I do think can happen here is a very important conversation on mental health. For example, you will see that Jamila Jamil said when someone is bipolar, it's going to make things easier. It's not going to make things easier for everyone involved. So one thing that happened was I responded to that by just stating the fact that a person isn't bipolar. He has bipolar disorder. There's a difference. Well, what's the difference? I was super surprised that Jamila not only read my comment, but immediately rectified the situation by stating that a person is not bipolar, they have bipolar disorder. The difference is that a person's identity is not a mental illness. And the truth is, Kanye can come back from this. His mental health can still be restored. I clarified as well that I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder a few years ago and had a really hard time not making that my full identity as a human being. So I just really would love to say that a mental illness is definitely not an excuse for the abusive behavior and the, ten you know, the stalking, but I want to get into that for a second too. A few years back, I had a relationship with a celebrity who would probably refer to it to a brief friendship. About three months we hung out, we talked, but the thing is we were also intimate with each other. I would consider it casually dating. Now, when I started to actually develop deeper romantic feelings, this person decided to withdraw from my life. They were aware that I struggled with bipolar disorder, and this was a point in my life when I was not very healthy about it. Despite the fact that I was starting to have success with pageants, I still put so much of my self-worth on the attention that this person gave me that when they stopped responding and ghosted me, I ended up showing up at their house. Now, I'm not a very large person and I'm certainly not violent, but I'm sure it was a little bit bizarre for the girl that he knew had bipolar disorder to show up at his house and announce, especially as a public figure. So I can kind of relate to, you know, Kanye's side of this, of feeling rejected and hurt and lost and abandoned and just wanting to do something to get that person back. Now, despite being a super hottie, I still messaged the celebrity for years after, hoping that we would be able to regain our friendship. And when I say we were friends, like, the man gave me a friendship bracelet. <laughs> like, this was not a manic episode, it actually happened. But still, I'm not proud of the way that I handled the situation after the fact. But you just need to understand that part of the reason I acted so crazy was that I believed I was a mental illness. I believed I am bipolar disorder, not I have bipolar disorder. I still technically have that diagnosis, but I know when to walk. Now, one thing I want to add is that we actually don't know anything about Kim Kardashian's mental health because she has never come forward about it, but everybody has mental health and everyone's on the spectrum. And when you're that under the public eye, you know, there are so many things that she could be struggling with from her own forms of narcissism, depression, anxiety. The fact is that she's probably not a perfectly 100% mentally healthy person because who is? So in conversations like this, it's really easy to want to point blame on one party because they're more outspoken, they're less in control. Sure, you can relate to that partner that you were with or your parent who never was the messy one, never was loud, never got in trouble, but somehow was always withholding emotions or unable to have an honest conversation. So these sort of breakdowns publicly, while it all looks like it's falling on Kanye's shoulders, 
it's never one person that's creating these situations. It's clearly, you know, something that he's responsible for. I'm not saying it's not his responsibility. And I'm not saying he's acting appropriately. I think the way he's been targeting Kim online and targeting Pete online, and honestly, the way that Pete's been targeting him back, none of this is healthy dialogue or communication. But I just want to say, like, having been through my own mental health breakdowns, it's usually not one person that's responsible. There are some points that Kanye has made in his series of posts the last few days that are very lucid and totally valid, like talking about how the Daily Mail can get away with posting 10 posts in a day without looking crazy, but when a person wants to express themselves that way, suddenly they're just the bipolar person. Now, he has said he has bipolar disorder. It's been confirmed he has bipolar disorder, but that's something that lives on a spectrum, and it's also something that can change and evolve throughout your lifetime. So just because he's going through it right now does not mean that this entire mental breakdown or whatever it is is just full mania, full delusion. Like, he's just as valid in his perspective as anybody else. Does that make it acceptable and okay to harass people? No. To stalk people? No. But are his feelings and his, and his emotions about what's going on 100% valid? Yes. He's also a public figure, so he's done everything in his life publicly. It makes sense that the way that he copes and grieves is publicly. Because when I was th going through my own situation with a public figure, you know, I, he always was like, well, you know, you have bipolar or like, you're just too obsessed with me. And I'm like, maybe it's because you made me believe we were close friends and then you betrayed me. <laughs> like everyone has their side of the story and I actually really respect Kanye for sharing his. I would like to see and hope that he has some other additional support besides social media, but I'm just grateful that he's using his platform and voice to highlight the experience of somebody going through what he's going through. You know, being a public figure is not all about being perfect. It's also about just expressing your human experience to the public. That's what it is. I don't think that that means we should be making fun of him. Um, I think it means that we should be having genuine conversations about what's going on. Showing up at somebody's house or stalking them online, these, these behaviors are not appropriate, but they're coming from a place of genuinely trying to save a relationship and thinking that this is how it's gonna get done. Kanye's gone about his entire life publicly. It makes sense that he's grieving publicly. And it makes sense that he thinks this is the way to win because it's how he's won so many times before. So, you know, in my own situation where I showed up at somebody's house after they ghosted me, I literally just like knocked on their guard's door because it was again an A-list celebrity. And then I left and went home. Like I wasn't violent. I wasn't trying to cause any trouble. I didn't want to, you know, create any chaos. I just wanted my friend back. And at, at 24 years old at the time, which is how old I was when this happened, I genuinely thought that's how I was gonna win my friend back because I've had times in my life where I've been fighting with a friend and I genuinely believed that if I just showed up, that, that, that you know th things would work themselves out and it did. Like one time I was at a festival and a friend of mine got in a fight and I went and found my friend at their camp and showed up unannounced and was like, we need to talk. And they did not want to talk, but when we finally did, it literally saved our relationship. So it's easy to like put people in categories of like this action's bad and you're crazy for doing that. Did I cross boundaries? Yeah, but sometimes that's actually saved a relationship, you know? So I just have, I have mixed feelings about this because, you know, I don't think the way that Kanye has been behaving online is appropriate. I don't think the fact that I messaged a celebrity for years after our relationship ended was appropriate. But in my head, was I genuinely trying to save the relationship? Yes. And has it actually worked in other circumstances? Yes. So I think we just need to have more grace and compassion for understanding that there's always different sides to the story and just being as responsible as we can for our own actions. And one thing I love that Kanye did is in one of his most recent posts, he apologized for using all caps in his communication. And he took responsibility for the fact that his communication might not be coming off as clearly as some people would have hoped, you know? Just because you're a celebrity doesn't mean you always know how to communicate or articulate your feelings. And I think it's actually really a huge sign of self-awareness and that he's not in a full on, full on manic episode, that he was able to say, hey, I don't realize that you guys might not be getting where I'm coming from. Like, let me slow down and try again. Um, we're all human, we're all imperfect, we all make mistakes, and many of our mistakes are because of mental health issues, even if we didn't realize at the time. So I think this is a perfect opportunity for us to have conversations with friends and family about how we can learn and grow to have more compassion for people with mental health issues. And also, you know, not excuse them. They're not a justification. You know, we have to be able to take accountability and responsibility when we mess up. That's all for now. Stay tuned for next week, and I'll be diving into... Um, some more mental health in entertainment, pop culture, and my own personal life.